Hey, I'm Derek, it's me, Derek, and welcome to Stop Skeletons of Fighting. And friends, it's time. It's, it's long past time. The DK Bongos. Created as a rhythm game controller, it had a very short life officially, but continue to live on today because look at it. Look, look at this. Don't you want to beat Dark Souls with this? I'm getting ahead of myself. Welcome to Punching Weights, where we celebrate the weird, ambitious, and unnecessary. And what is more weird, ambitious, and unnecessary than bongo controllers? It is time. Let's go. But first, this video is sponsored in part by Raycon. Bongos rule everything around me. But luckily, with Raycon's everyday earbuds, my family doesn't have to have bongos rule everything around them. Raycon's everyday earbuds feature noise isolation, which can last for up to eight hours of playtime, which is like five minutes in bongo years. To be honest, Raycon are my first time aboard the wireless earbud train because they just seem so expensive and I'm probably gonna lose one of them. But Raycon is actually really affordable. You can get a pair and a spare and still pay less than other big name tech brands. Basically, you're getting earbuds that are just as good, if not better, for half the price. Now, I'm no math expert, but that sounds like a great deal to me. Also, these squishy little guys keep them locked in my ears no matter what I throw at them, even my patented extreme bongo workouts. Raycon is offering my audience a great deal. Click on the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash SSFF to get 15% off your first Raycon purchase. That's buyraycon.com slash SSFF to get 15% off your purchase of your next Raycon purchase. And real talk, we really, really appreciate your support. Thank you so much, but now, hey, on to the bongos. The Donkey Kong bongos are the second most ridiculous official thing you can plug into your GameCube, just being edged out by the Resident Evil 4 chainsaw control. It has sensors on the left and right drum, a start button in the front, and a mic here at the center for clapping, snapping, tapping, or screaming, I guess. <laughs> so four triggers, four buttons, right? Actually, no, there are six buttons on this thing. There's a front and a back trigger on either the left and right. That's interesting because none of the games that officially use this use the front and back triggers which to me says they had loftier ambitions for this thing than they ever realized. The bongos were extremely short-lived, only officially compatible with Donkey Konga and Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. Yeah, Nintendo was going through it in the early 2000s. Today, we think of the GameCube as a legendary moment for Nintendo. The facts were that at the time, it was a pretty big flop. I mean, not a Wii U-sized flop, but the meanest thing you can say about the Wii U was that, man, it didn't even outsell the GameCube. Nintendo had been having diminishing returns with all of its systems, and the GameCube was looking to be a new low. So in the face of GameCube failure, what did Nintendo do? They gave us bongos. What did that meeting look like? Alright people, Pikmin flopped and no one can admit they like Wind Waker for at least five more years. We're in Turismo and GTA and Halo are eating our lunch. What do we got? Um, bongos sir? <sighs> bongos. It just might work. It didn't, but thank god they tried. Seriously, this is the type of thing I love about Nintendo. Microsoft was not gonna try this. Sony wasn't gonna try this. Sega might have done this. They made maracas, but that's why they weren't around anymore. This is Nintendo when they're pushed up against a wall, when they're just being at their creative, weirdest, dumbest possible. Though Nintendo doesn't deserve all the credit, part of the credit also goes to Namco. You see, in 2001, Namco released a little arcade game called Taiko no Tatsujin after years of an economic tailspin. It was a major hit for the company, and Namco quickly rushed out a Japanese-only PS2 version the following year. North America had to wait until 2004 till we got Taiko Drum Master. However, in the meantime, bongos! The DK bongos were made for the Donkey Konga games. And Donkey Konga is a rhythm game that looks an awful lot like Taiko Drum Master, that's because it basically is Taiko Drum Master. Co-developed by Namco, it is the exact same setup as Taiko Drum Master, and I would imagine a lot of the same songs are in there. Now, technically, there were four games made for the DK Bongos, but because I like this little guy, I'm gonna give it a little help here. There were eight games with the DK Bongos, seven of which were the Donkey Konga games. Uh, that's because Donkey Konga 1 and 2 came out in North America, PAL, and Japan, and each of those games in each of those regions had different track listings, then Donkey Konga 3 only came out in Japan. So hey, seven! That's seven games right there! You, you did it, buddy! So the bulk of the games that can use the bongos are Donkey Konga. And 
that game's fine. I don't know. To be honest, I've never really liked the Donkey Konga games. I think it's because I don't like the hand clapping. And then also once you realize it just looks like Taiko Drum Master, I'd rather play Taiko Drum Master. I mean, forgetting how much more fun Taiko Drums are. Man, check out how colorful the UI is. Each song is like a celebration. It's like a friggin' party. On the other hand, Donkey Konga over here, stunting six frame animated GIFs like it's a MySpace fan page. It's Oye Como Va. That's the most boogie you can muster for Santana? Come on! Ultimately, there's not that much to say about the Donkey Konga games, because the Konga games themselves weren't weird or interesting enough. Maybe Nintendo thought that the bongos would make them weird and interesting, but in the face of Space Channel 5 and Parappa, Vib Ribbon, DDR, hell, even the WarioWare games, which WarioWare games aren't like rhythm games, but there's definitely like a rhythmic cadence to those games. They just, I think people wanted something weirder. This was a few years before Guitar Hero left a stadium-sized crater on pop culture. Nintendo needed a hit, but clapping along to Louie Louie was not cool or weird enough. And yes, you can play this with four controllers. Check out this dude here posting his DK Bongo skills in 2006. My hat is off to you, sir. Thank you for your service. Then again, they did get good Charlotte for the TV commercial, so I guess they gave it their best. Girls don't like boys, girls like Donkey Kongas. I play the North American games the most, and maybe that's coloring my bias. When I did actually sit down and play the Japanese versions, yo, there's some J-pop bangers on there. Stuff I'd never heard of, but like, I think maybe we just got the lamer, or maybe the lamest track listing. But the real reason to bring up the bongos at all is because of the last game to use the Donkey Kong bongos, Jungle Beat. Donkey Kong Jungle Beat is a fascinating game, and like, low-key, one of the best GameCube games ever made. It is so good, like way better than it has any right to be. It's crazy. First of all, the bongos were made for Donkey Konga, but Jungle Beat was made for the bongos. It was designed around the bongos. So let's just get this out of the way right now. You can play this game with a controller. You can play it on the Wii with Wiimote and Nunchuck, but Jungle Beat was made to be played with the bongos. And I'd argue it is the best way to play. And it is just a goddamn blast to play. It is a platformer where the drums move DK to the left or right. Hitting both drums makes you jump, and clapping your hands makes you snap to or break nearby items. And that's it! But there is so much creativity and variety here. Donkey Kong Jungle Beat is wall jumping, and running, and racing, and soaring, and punch out fighting with other Kongs. It is a rhythm platform capital G game. You can download software and make the DK bongos work for other random games if you want. We'll talk about that in a minute. But here's a platformer that was meant to use the bongos and it works. The brilliance of this game can really just be wrapped up in the intro, the title screen. This game starts and tutorializes itself and explains itself to the audience without any text on the screen and before the title screen even starts. You could do an entire lecture on game development on just the title screen moment of this game. It starts with Donkey Kong just sitting there and then a clap emoji shows up on screen. You clap, lights come on, and then you start moving around. You got left, you got right, there's nothing else you can do. It explains the entire game to you in just a few seconds. It then extrapolates wildly on that throughout all of the many, many levels, but the core concept of the game is simple, can be explained quickly without any kind of text on the screen. That's kind of like one of the most brilliant moments of this game. Though I did really, really like the punch out moments. There are too many to name, but honestly, you know you're really dealing with an incredibly well-made and well-thought-of game when it starts off like that instead of just a wall of text or a bunch of pop-up windows that keep telling you something. Today would be like, a bit of Cranky Kong with clapping his hands. I wonder if I should try doing that as well. Mm. Look at those small monkeys running to the right. I should try hitting the right bongo to see if I can run to the right with those other monkeys that were running to the right with the right bongo to the right. The one next to the left bongo on the right. None of that. Just, yo, a clap emoji, and then it works. And then you push one way, and he walks one way. You push another way, he walks the other way. And then you walk long enough, and you pick up the barrel, and you throw up the screen, and start the game. That's all you need. And here's the thing, folks. These bongos and Jungle Beat changed the course of history. Kinda. Of course, you know anything about this game, you know that this is basically the prequel to Mario Galaxy. That is because it was directed by Yoshikai Koizumi, who directed, you know, Majora's Mask, Mario Sunshine, Mario Galaxy, and Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. It's like hearing that James Cameron worked on Piranha 2. One of these things is not like the other. 
we all love Mario Sunshine and Mario 64, right? But let's be real, the camera in those games is kind of bad. And it was working on Jungle Beat that Koizumi got the idea of, wait a minute, if I have a 2D plane, I don't have to worry about the camera. So if I put that 2D plane on a sphere, I don't have to worry about the camera. And this is basically the reason why Mario Galaxy takes place on a bunch of spheres. But this weird bongo game deserves to be in that canon with Sunshine and Galaxy because this is that legendary team when the pressure is maybe off of them a bit. This was them like, okay, just have fun. Don't worry about selling 20 million copies because this game did not do that. Don't stress over making something that literally an entire system is balanced on. And that's kind of what Jungle Beat was because for this team, specifically Nintendo EAD Tokyo Development Department 1, this was their first game as a team. So it's like listening to a legendary band's first jam session and then realizing, oh, wow, these guys were destined for greatness from the very beginning. But unfortunately, it was curtains for the Donkey Kong bongos after that. Four games, charitably eight, but really just four games. One extremely crazy good platformer and three to seven largely forgettable rhythm games. Oh, so true. However, that doesn't mean there weren't other games that were going to use the bongos. Future Punching Weight candidate, Odama, aka the voice-activated real-time strategy pinball game for the GameCube, was developed to use the Donkey Kong bongos, but that was taken out at some point in development. I tested it out. If you don't got that memory card slot with that microphone, you ain't playing no Odama. Sorry, I'll do better next time. Also, Barrel Blast? I can't believe I didn't realize this until making this video, but what are those? No, those are bongos. Those are not barrels. It was going to be called Bongo Blast. They changed it to Barrel Blast, but you didn't change the bongos. I see you. I see you, Nintendo. I mean, I didn't see you at first, but I see you now. Playing the game with motion controls, it's just like a decent, fine, I guess, racing game. It's not a whole lot to get excited about, to be honest. And the tutorial in that game, bunch of windows, lots of text, super boring. Just saying. The game's fine. And then Jungle Beat got a Wii Play control version, which I'm sure is fine and a great way to play this game. But who cares? The people want bongos. And there's actually a lot you can do with the bongos. Uh, like the RE4 Chainsaw Controller, it is just a funny looking GameCube controller that can work with any game that is compatible with a GameCube controller. Well, almost, okay. There are six triggers on the bongos that match six buttons on the controller. Top left and top right are Y and X. Bottom left and bottom right are B and A. The mic in the middle is R, and start is start. What this means is yes, while blowing into the mic, you can push bottom right and fire a rocket in Resident Evil 4. Yes, it is missing a key component, directional buttons. No D-pad, no analog stick. We get most of the buttons, but no real movement is possible on the DK bongos, unless uh, you actually get really creative. For example, like using the built-in gyro controls in Kirby Tilt and Tumble but holding the GameCube system and using bongos as foot pedal jump buttons. You can also play WarioWare this way too, but in an official sense, this is where the DK bongos die. And that's the thing about it. Nintendo doesn't decide when the bongos die, the people do. And the people have said the bongos never die. There are two reasons to care about the bongos. Okay, three. One, they exist. But two, Jungle Beat, which is amazing. And number three, Crazy people on the internet. Heroes on the internet. And I spoke to one of these heroes, Super Lewis 64 a professional controller bender. He has played Dark Souls 3 with a Ring Fit controller, Halo 3 with the Guitar Hero guitar, and Elden Ring with bananas. If anyone can tell me about playing games with DK bongos, it is Mr. Super Lewis 64. Is it true you actually have played many Souls games with Donkey Kong bongos? Yes, I, there was a period of my time where someone gave me these bongos and said beat Dark Souls with it, and then I took it too far. In fact, to this day, I still haven't beat Sek Sekiro with a normal controller. I've only beaten it with bongos. Is that bad? <laughs> Do you have like a background in music? Are you an expert typist? Do you have an... A amazing like saxophone fingers are you a pianist how the muscle memory that you need and the dexterity the finger dexterity you need to play something like a souls game with four bongos i don't have any musical background in fact most of my family does i was the odd kid who didn't want to get into music so i don't know how my brain got used to it i might have deleted some very important life memories to, to map bongos into my brain to make it work for other games. The cool thing about the DK bongos, I wish Nintendo did more stuff with it. They're really durable. Like this thing has lasted longer than some of my Xbox controllers, some of my consoles to be honest. And 
if you miss, it doesn't matter too hard because it's such a big piece of a controller. It's okay if you mess up, you know what I mean? Because at least it's it can take the hit of you hitting it too hard. Yeah, definitely. Like these were made for ADD hyperactive kids. <laughs> oh, me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, and this is really the question I have. It's like in the controller bending, this like controller challenge scene, mm. it, are the bongos like a coveted, highly sought after thing? Are, is it also like a ba badge of honor? Is, or is that, that kind of like at this point, like a basic challenge? Like, <laughs> where are we with it? I think it, you were right about the coveted item. I feel like every time someone asks me to be like, hey, how do I hook up this controller to this? It's always the bongos. People really like it when you beat it, beat a game with the bongos because it it just doesn't look, it doesn't make sense when you look at it. Like most people yeah. don't know that there are four buttons on the top where, you know, you can clap or yell into the mic <laughs> and it makes an input. And I guess the other question is like, okay, how the hell do you do this? What program do you use and what kind of other hardware do you need to hook these up to a PS5? I'm assuming you're running it through some kind of thing on your computer, the pat pass through, right? To, to, to change the inputs, right? Yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna say dark magic, but it's a lot easier than that. Uh, so I have two methods right now. One method is really hard to do. I have a couple of input converters. One was called the Titan Twos, but they are super out of stock and just I think they're never coming back. But they were really good at converting any controller to any input. Mm. Um, but the other ways I would do it is I would connect to my PC. The easiest program that I recommend to most people is called Joy to Cube. If your controller can connect to your PC, it will usually show up in that program and it will uh, change those inputs into keyboard inputs and you can just go on from there. And then another way I do is I actually have like a Python program or an Arduino on the side that converts the inputs myself or through there, uh, through the scripts I put on the Arduino or the Python program I'm working in. Now, so you could really get very nested with the amount of uh, programming wizardry you can do. Yeah, it's a fun, it's a, it's a really fun hobby. And yeah. I get to meet a lot of cool people, especially the, the modern scene was like, it was super chill. I'm like, oh, dude, I'm so used to other scenes being like, no, you can't do this because then you're going to steal views. I'm like, bro, we're just playing Dark Souls with Mongos, man. We're not really doing much. <laughs> no, you ain't about that life. I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, no, we own this. I'm like, bro, it's just a pizza controller. Dude. <laughs> like, like that, That's good to know that like <laughs> that community is just like pass or fail. You either are doing it or you're not. It's just like <laughs> yeah. the second you're you, 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 the second you will pull the bongos out. It's like you're one of us. No, come. <laughs> yeah, there's no no fees. You don't need to prove it. You don't even have to beat the game. It's just like, oh, you're crazy enough to do this like us. You're in. But like, <laughs> well, that's like the best sell for that community I've ever heard is <laughs> yeah. just so, so long as you're crazy enough, you're one of us. That's so great. <laughs> but then finally, the real reason we started making this video, somebody made a new game for the Donkey Kong Bongos. Bull Beat is an indie game made by Cobra Co. And it kind of feels a lot like Jungle Beat, specifically the bull riding levels, but it is a little short. It's not the tightest game. And I was a little upset that there wasn't more of it. It is just a proof of concept. I would play a whole game like this, but you know, I'm Uncle Derek. Of course I would. You can download and play the game for free. That is linked below. I also link the video he posted where he broke down how he made the whole game in Unreal Engine 5. Finally, things have come full bongo. The bongos never stop. That's why they look like infinity. They will always be here. All hail the bongos. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like, hit the subscribe button if you want more videos from the funnest, dumbest video game channel on YouTube. Huge shout out to Cobra Code. Their game, Bull Beat, was really the thing that got the ball rolling on this video, even though there wasn't too much to talk about, but still check out his game. It's so cool. Also, huge shout out to Super Lewis 64 for chatting with us. He's actually helped out with videos before, but I never actually chatted with him outside of DMs. If you want to listen to a longer version of our conversation, that is up on our Patreon. And it was so great to have him on the show finally proper. And I also need to thank Grace for convincing me to buy a pair of DK bongos again. I used to have many, many pairs of bongos, but then I sold them all because I didn't really like Donkey Konga that much. And they took up a lot of space. She talked me down to one set we found at a thrift store for a couple of bucks. And it's crazy that it's taken this many years to give the bongos a proper episode. But anyway, this is Stop Skeletons and Fighting, a show that is made possible by every name you see here. You can join their ranks 
for only a dollar. That is patreon.com slash stop skeletons from fighting. Also, be sure to check out our podcast, Stop Skeletons from Podcasting, though I am going to be spending the next month working remotely to spend time with family, but this will be a great time to go through that back catalog of podcast episodes. Thanks again for watching. I'm Uncle Derek reminding you again to stay powerful.